Hey guys, today we're going to run through the process of using the engine for control type patterns to modulate various parameters on outboard gear that you have uh, and also how to use these six assignable knobs to modulate various control numbers on other pieces of gear. So using the control type pattern is one of the last aspects of the engine I got into myself. I kind of skipped over that section in the manual and decided I'd come back after I'd figured out all the other core processes of the engine. Once I got to it today, I found that it was a little counterintuitive. Uh, the manual is pretty clear on how to create control type patterns, but in my mind at least, it was a little less clear on how to actually route those control patterns to the parameters you're trying to modify. So in this case, the first thing we want to do is select the track that we're trying to create the control type pattern on. We're going to be using track 5, and you can see here that track 5 is already illuminated on the engine, so we're on the right track. And just to verify what MIDI channel track 5 is assigned to, you can click and hold function and click the snapshot down key that says MIDI channel right above it. And you'll see that we're sending out on port 1, MIDI port 1, MIDI channel 5. In my case, MIDI channel 5 goes to this old virus where we have it just loaded up with a standard bright sawtooth waveform with a long decay and release so that we can hear it clearly and we'll trigger it off of this Triton. So that's the waveform that we're going to modify and just to make sure we have like a clearly audible parameter that we're going to modulate we'll do the filter cutoff. So the next thing you want to do is determine which parameter you're going to modulate. So we just said it's going to be the filter cutoff, and the next thing to figure out is what control number maps to the filter cutoff. So I've got the virus manual here, and if you see there, number 40 is the cutoff. Cutoff 2 right below that corresponds to the second filter. We're just going to mess with the first one. So we're looking for number 40. You can see up top. MIDI controller assignments and control number. The next part is what really threw me off because I hadn't been using these assignable knobs yet. So once you create the control type pattern, you basically have to almost route that pattern through one of these knobs to send it out to whatever piece of gear you're trying to modulate. Each one of these knobs can have a control number mapped to it. So if none of these knobs correspond to that number 40, then we'll never be able to modify the filter cutoff with this control type pattern. So there's a few steps involved with this. Basically, we want to make sure that these knobs are set up properly and going to the correct MIDI channel and MIDI port that we're looking for. And then we want to make sure that one of them has the number 40 assigned to it so that we can use that control type pattern to modulate the filter cutoff. So first you want to enter utility mode, so hold function and click the rest slide button that says utility above it. And now if you hold step one, it says knob channel above that. You've got six knobs and if you want to find out which channel those knobs are assigned to, you want to click one of the uh, white key buttons, one through six, that corresponds to which knob you're trying to look up. So if we want to see what channel knob 3 is assigned to, for example, click that and you'll see that 1, 3. That means that this knob is going to MIDI port 1, channel 3. That's global. That means that no matter what track we're on in the engine, knob 3 is always going to go to MIDI port 1 and MIDI channel 3. Now if you want to set up those six knobs to be different for each individual track on the engine, you have that capability and you see that indicated by this track on the LED, the TR. So if you want to say switch it from track and go to a specific MIDI port and channel, then you can use this knob one to adjust that. But in our case, we're gonna leave it with track. The next thing we need to do is make sure that one of these six knobs is assigned to control number 40. Otherwise, we can set up the control type pattern uh, but and we can even send it to the virus, but it won't know what parameter we're trying to modulate And this is the part that I think threw me off is that you can't just create the control type pattern You also have to assign the knobs 
and make sure that a knob is assigned to whatever parameter it is that you're trying to modulate. So first things first, let's look at how to get a little bit more information about how the knobs are currently set up. To do that, enter utility mode. So you click and hold function and click this rest slide button that says utility above it. Now you can hold step one, which says knob chan right above it. And clicking on these white keys one through six will show you the MIDI channel that each of those six knobs is assigned to. So if we want to see what knob three is currently assigned to, click and hold three. And you'll see up here on the LED that it's assigned to MIDI port one and MIDI channel three on that. Now let's say uh, that, that one three is a global effect. So no matter what track we're on in the engine, moving knob three is going to send a message out from MIDI port one on channel three. Let's say we want to have those six knobs assigned to completely different parameters for each individual track. That's possible. So if you click and hold one, go back to, to knob three, scroll over here to TR, that means track. That means that this knob is now going to be specifically locked to this track. So in other words, anytime we twist knob three, that's automatically going to go out MIDI channel five on track five. Okay, so we've just determined that knob six is set to track, which is what we want. So that's going to go out automatically on the MIDI channel and MIDI port that the overall track is set to. Now we want to make sure that it's sending out the correct control number, which we've determined is 40. So if you click step two, which says knob CC above it, and then click six for knob six, you'll see that we're currently set to number 80. So what we want to do is some hand acrobatics and get over here to knob one and modify that to control number 40. Good. Now the next thing we need to do is actually create the pattern. If you hold down the track button, the current pattern will flash and any other used pattern will show up here illuminated in red. We want to use a brand new blank pattern, so let's go with number 11. You'll see that we've got a totally blank pattern. So the next thing you want to do is make sure that the pattern type is set to control type pattern. So click and hold function and click this roll art button that says change pattern type above it. And you'll see that we're not set to control type pattern, we're set to synth 2. Now if we click backwards or forward or use this knob 1, we can scroll through the various different types of patterns. And what we want in this case is control. Now to save that and lock that in as the new pattern type, click section where these LEDs are blinking. Alright, so now that that stopped blinking, we know that we have a control type pattern. You also know that because the LED of change pattern type now is flashing, which means that it's control type. If it's just illuminated, then that means that it's drum, and if it's dark, then that means that it's synth. Flashing always means control type pattern. Next, we want to actually enter the values that we're sending out to the filter cutoff, as well as the steps on which those values occur. Now, in order to do that, you need to determine which of these six knobs you're sending these signals out through. So while you're in the control type pattern, click and hold the transpose drum select button. Again, the white keys each correspond to these six knobs. So right now we would be entering values for knob three, but as we've determined, we want to enter values for knob six. So click six and let's just enter four different values on steps one, five, nine, and 13. And what we'll do is we'll gradually open the filter. So we want to start with a low value. Let's go here, set the first trigger to 30, set the next one to 60. Third one will go to 90 and the last one will go to 120 to have the filter almost totally open. 
Now, it's important not to miss this step because, again, these are all solely assigned to knob 6. Now, if we also wanted to modify, let's say, like the volume of the patch at the same time, or pulse width if we were using a square wave, you could go look up what the control number is for volume and assign that to number 1, look up the control number for pulse width and assign that to 2, and if you wanted to enter different steps to modify those, you just come back here, click the transpose drum select button, and select the key that corresponds to whatever knob you're trying to modulate. But in this case, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to do the filter cutoff. So let's go back here to 6, and we should be good to go. Let's check the unaffected audio from the virus, make sure things still sound right. Bright Sawtooth. All right, now it's time to see if we set up everything properly. So we want to hit Run Stop so that the pattern is now cycling and should be sent out to the virus. And now we're looking to make sure that it's actually affecting the filter cutoff. Now you can hear that that's still the bright sawtooth wave with no other modulation to it. The reason why is because we forgot to unmute that track, which means that even though you see the pattern running, it's effectively muted and not being sent to the virus. So to unmute it, while you're clicking mute, select the track. Now let's try again. And so we can tell it's working. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now if you want to go a step further and actually program sounds in one track uh, so that we can actually send a pattern from the engine to the virus without me having to press the keys on the Triton, then you just need to choose another track and use the other track to, uh, to send the control type pattern out. So in that case, let's say that we want to use track 5 to send out notes to the virus and we want to use track 6 to do things like filter sweeps. It's no problem, you just go to track 6, click function, MIDI channel, and make sure that that's set to the MIDI channel you want to use, which in our case would be 5. So you can stack as many different patterns as you'd like up to the eight different tracks uh, if you want to, you know, basically just have a ton of different control patterns being sent to one piece of gear. But also don't forget that within this one control type pattern that you have, that we already have five other opportunities to layer other control signals on there. So if you go to the transpose and click over here for button two, for example, then can trigger in a completely different pattern, all routed through knob 2, which needs to be assigned to whatever parameter you're trying to modulate, and that will work completely independently on the same pattern from what we've already set up here on knob 6. So again, holding transpose will show that we're on knob 6, and this will show those four varying degrees of filter opening that we've already set up. So that's basically it. I hope that makes it a bit more clear on how to actually use control type patterns on the engine as well as how to assign those six knobs to send out various control signals. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. Also let me know what else you'd like to see demo or tutorial videos on with regards to the engine. We've also got a few for the, the Drum Brute that we're going to publish soon and we'll probably be doing some for the Octatrack and the No Coast, possibly some MS-20 tricks. So anything else you'd like to see with those pieces of gear, definitely let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, please subscribe. Thanks.